Hi and welcome to another episode of Reaper TV. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at how we can actually take a guitar, how we can input it into our digital audio workstation, and how we can record that with a DI signal. Now, there's a couple of ways you can record your guitar. You can record it through a mic through the cabinet, or you can record it directly into the actual interface on your computer, or you can actually take a direct line out if your amplifier allows you to do that kind of thing with a, a, a simulated output. In this example, we're going to keep it simple. We're going to use the interface on the computer and we're going to use that to take a dry signal in and then we're going to influence that signal and change the sound through using uh, amp simulators, the kind of thing that allows us to emulate all the different kinds of amplifiers and multiple effects and things like that. So let's take a look at how we can do that now. Okay, so the first thing we're going to need to do is to get the audio from our guitar and into the computer. And to do that, we're going to be using an audio interface. And in this example, I'm going to be using the Roland Quad Capture, which is a cost-effective multi-input interface that allows me to connect up multiple instruments simultaneously. I can also connect up 48-volt powered microphones with a flick of a switch on the back of it. So when you're looking for interfaces, I would recommend, at its bare minimum, allow one input and 48 volt phantom power so you can run condenser microphones and other types of microphones that require power. So let's take a look at how we connect the guitar up to that and how that then works with Reaper to get the signal into our digital audio workstation. So for my example I just simply insert the guitar cable into my first line input, hit the auto send so we can check the levels and ensure that we don't clip. So the first thing we need to do is set up Reaper to accept the line level input that we're going to be feeding in through our interface. So to do this, all we need to do is come up to the left hand side of the screen, double click and that'll insert a track ready for us to start inputting some, some sound. What we can do with this is we can just keep a dry signal coming in, we can monitor that so we can just check the levels to ensure that everything coming in is not peaking and not sort of going to distort. The other thing we can do is we can actually live monitor this. So any sound that's being fed into the computer will actually be monitored back through our speakers. So we can check to make sure that whatever we're doing, any effects and things we're applying to it, we can hear that affected signal, which is great if you're working with virtual instruments, which is what we are going to do in this. We're taking a dry signal in. We're then running it through Reaper. We're running it through some effects. And then we need to monitor that to make sure that we can hear it as it's intended to be heard. So let's take a look at how we can do that, how we can add the first of our effects in there and how we can set this up to monitor and how we can set it up to start recording. With our first track selected, all we need to do is come over to the effects button, click to show the effects window, and that'll allow us to choose any effects that we have already installed in our Reaper software. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come down and I'm gonna be using a particular plugin and what I'm looking for is positive grid, and I'm going to be using bias effects. So we're going to double click that, that'll load that in. We'll see the effect interface, and then we can start working with our signal. So as you can see, with the interface loaded or with the, the effects loaded, I've got my entire signal chain already set up, multiple amplifiers and so on. Now, obviously this video is not going to show you how to set this up. We'll take a look at that in a completely different video, but we're just using this as an example of a virtual instrument or sorry, a virtual effects rack, a virtual amplifiers and things like that. So with that set up, we now have something to affect our signal. Now we need to actually sort of start recording that signal. So once we hit the record, we'll find that as we play any kind of sounds, you're going to start getting the line level sound on this. So you can see our meters are peaking to show us that we have some signal coming in. So as I strum the guitar, you can see that we're going to get some signal showing up on the meters. So we know that we've got our signal going in correctly. It's been affected by the sound on this, which we can disable if you want to, just by using the effects enable disable icon, uh, button. So we've got everything set up. All we need to do now is actually monitor this signal. So you can see we have a little play button. And that currently is telling us that record monitoring is set to off. So if we click to switch that on, we'll hear the sound of our guitar. So you should be able to hear that. It's not a particularly brilliant sound, but you can hear it. 
So we've got everything set up now, ready to start recording. So the next stage is to start recording. I've got monitoring set up. I've got the record. This track is now armed, ready for recording. So anything I record now, or anything I play when I hit the record, is going to start coming through this. So if I just give it a couple of little strums on the guitar, you can hear. So you can see our levels are not too bad. I'll actually take that back just a little bit because I don't want to start peaking. So you can see that this gives us an indication of the loudest you've got, which is minus 8.9 dB. So as long as we're not peaking, we're okay. We're good to go. And we can reset that simply by clicking on it. So I'll actually take that back down. I want to get this to around about minus 18. So if I switch back to the mixer, we can see a little bit better what we're doing. Let's just expand this up so we can see a bit better on this meter. So still a little bit hot. So that'll do. We're around minus 16 dB. Obviously, the most important thing with this is to ensure that when we're recording, that we have plenty of headroom left for when we want to start applying effects to it later on. We want to compress it and things like that, which we will cover in, in future videos. Just so you know that we want to make sure that we don't go over about minus, between minus 18 and minus 12 dB. That gives us plenty of headroom to work with. So we're good to go. So all I'm going to do is hit the record and we'll find as I start playing along, we'll start to record. We see the waveform appear across this section. So let's just hit record and just play a little bit. And we'll stop that. So there we go. So we've done our first piece of recording. So this is our first recording done. Let's just disable the record so the track is no longer armed. So if we hit the record, nothing would happen. So we've got our first bit of audio in there. If we just press play, we can listen to what that sounds like. So what we've done is we've got this now being affected by the actual virtual instrument. So in this case, like I say, bias effects. So let's just close that down. And if I just disable this, we'll listen to it now without any effects being applied to it. So what you're going to hear now is the DI signal, the direct input signal, direct from our interface. So there's no effects. There's nothing being applied to this. And this is, like I say, where the beauty of recording in this method comes in because we can now change any parameter we want on the virtual instrument we could even change it to a completely different virtual instrument and the original signal will never ever be affected. So let's just play. There we go, completely clean guitar. So just to show you what I mean, if I just open the effects panel up and for this example, I'll just take off bias and we'll just put a different one in there. So let's just open this up. I'll go to tune track, we'll try easy mix. And from the easy mix interface, which is Effectively another virtual instrument, but it allows us to do a lot more, which again, I've got videos on this, so take a look at those if you want to know a bit more about this. So we'll just choose a particular guitar sound, and we'll rewind. Switch this back on. So now we have a completely different sound again. And if I just turn off the effects, you'll see that we still got the same dry signal. So that's the basics of recording through a line level interface where we can use virtual amp simulators, virtual instruments, and things like that to change the way that the clean signal is played back to us. I hope you found this introduction to recording useful. I hope it's going to give you an insight into how easy it is to use programs like Reaper to record your instruments through a simple cost-effective interface. And once you've done that, you can make it sound like almost anything you want by using virtual amplifiers. Or if you want to, you want to get it more complicated where you can reamp these out, take your direct signal into a real amplifier, affect the sound via the real amplifier, and then you can then bring that signal back in so you'll retain the original clean audio like we've got there, the direct input, and you'll have a second track that has an affected sound using a real amplifier. 
Now that's something that's beyond the scope of what we're going to cover in this tutorial, but we may take a look at that in the future. I hope you found this useful. If you have, please hit the subscribe button to be kept up to date with all of the future tutorials that are released every single Friday on the Reaper channel. If you've got any comments, questions, or feedback on this tutorial or anything else we cover on the channel, please pop that in the comments section below. We read everything you post and we try to reply to every question and every piece of feedback. Remember, if you want exclusive content not available anywhere else, please pop over to www.reapertv.co.uk where you can access this additional information completely free. Well, until next time, happy mixing. <laughs>